Hey everybody, welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my bestie, Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie, Jessica. All right, guys, so it is February. And with that, we like to bring back our My Moody Valentine that we talked about in February of last year. So we've already done Obsessive. And so now we are going to be doing Heroes and Heroines Who Are on a Psych Ward. We're doing, we're doing crazy ones today. <laughs> So let's talk about books where it is set in the psych ward or we have patients who've been in the psych ward or in psychiatric hospitals. So that's what it's going to be, right? Yes. But first, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You definitely want to be entered in our one to Road to 1K giveaway to win these Karen Crompton books. They are fabulous and you definitely want them. Um, also, hit that like button and comment below and let us know, do you like this trope? Yeah. Where they're the psych or the asylums. Do you like it? Let us know mm -hmm. if you do. And what are some of your favorites in this trope? Mm -hmm. I definitely have a few more that I want to read in this, in this genre or in this trope um, that I didn't get to get to. It's harder to find them there, but there are like in dark romance, you can find them somewhat, but some of those are a little crazy. Uh, but we hopefully, we think we found some good ones for you guys. I'm excited for this trope. I think this trope is kind of fun. So, yes, I definitely have some well-rounded, like I have some mm -hmm. dark, I have some lighter, I have some taboo, like some I'm historical. I'm very well-rounded in this. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So are we ready to get started? Yes. Okay. All right. So our very first one is going to be personal favorite. This is from the Fairfax world. This is Unravel by Calla Reed. So there are two books in this series. Jessica will talk about the second one. I highly recommend reading them in order because the second one features a character that you meet in the first one. So this is definitely romantic suspense. We have Naomi who is in a mental hospital and Naomi is telling you that she's not crazy. She doesn't belong here, but can we trust her? She's in a mental hospital. So romantic suspense all the way. We have Lachlan, we have Lana, we have Max. Who are these people? Do they really exist? Or is she imagining them? What is going on? That is really all I'm going to tell you about this because if I say any more, it gives way too much away. So you definitely want to go into this one blind and just know <laughs> Naomi is going to tell you she is not crazy. Question everything, guys. Yes. So it, um, it again, one of my favorites. It's fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So on that note, let me just jump right into the next book, which is my first rec. And that is Unhinged by Calorie. So this is the second book in the Fairfax series. Now, like Mandy said, you can read them as standalones, but it's so much better if you read them in order. Um, this is about Victoria, who we see in the first book. Uh, we see Naomi talking about her or that she sees her at the at the psychiatric hospital in Fairfax. But um, now we get her story. And so we see her walking around with her baby. We, she's, she's got her little baby, Evelyn, there with her. And she doesn't remember the last three years of her life. And so she decides that she wants to ha get these memories back. She's being visited by her husband. She's being visited by Sinclair. She doesn't know who Sinclair is. He's this guy who keeps trying to get in to see her. And she doesn't know who he is. She doesn't remember him. She's like, why is this guy like, you know, breaking down the door to see me? And so um, she decides to stop taking her medication so that she can remember, or at least try to remember, because the meds make her feel groggy. And so that is where we start out with the story of her trying to get her memories back so that she can get better, so that she and Evelyn can leave the mental hospital. Um, but again, you have to question everything because she's in a psych ward. So, you know, definitely suspenseful, has quite the twist in it. Uh, just, it's so good. Mm -hmm. My next recommendation is a trilogy. It starts with Stay With Me. This is by Nicole Fiorina. These are fairly decent sized books, but you definitely have to read all three because they are the story continues with the same couple throughout. So we start off, I'm going to just hold up one book because it's a little easier. So we have Mia who has a lot of hurt in her life and she is acting out and she just doesn't feel feelings and she gets sent to across the pond to uh, what we call it, they, they refer to it as a university, but it is a mental hospital for like deranged 
kids, teenagers. And she gets sent here because she drives her stepmom's BMW through the garage on purpose. So she's she's really acting out a lot. But unfortunately, she's not getting the help that she needs. So she goes to this university where she's, it's, it's a psych ward. <laughs> and she's there. They go to school. They do all these things kind of like they would normally do. But at night, they're locked in their rooms. They have to take pills, their medicines, that sort of thing. They see psychiatrists and all of that. So it's it kind of has like boarding school feels to it. But again, psych ward deranged people are at this place. So it definitely has dark elements in it as well. So while she's here, she meets Ollie. And Ollie also is a student here. I think they're like 18, 19 here. And they're finishing out their sentences basically here. And Mia's dad has a lot of money. So he's able to get her into this place instead of her doing jail time back in the States. So a lot happens in here. Ollie is immediately taken, you know, to Mia. Mia really likes him. And I'm going to just sum up the book by what it says on the back because so much happens in this story that I don't want to give anything away. And so it makes it a little bit harder to talk about some of these books when there's going to be twists and turns and things. So the back of the book says, but because of her sociopath tendencies, she knows it could only end in one of two ways. Either Ollie will be the one to free her from her past, or she will be the one to destroy him. So, there you have it. Okay. Can you fall in love with a psychopath? Oh, I <laughs> or a sociopath, I, mean, not, I guess. <laughs> not in real life, but in a book, I sure can. <laughs> okay. Um. So then we go, so so my next book is uh, somewhat historical, I guess we'd say. So that is uh, Beyond the Moon by Katherine Taylor. So this is about our heroine who is Louisa, and this takes place in 2017. Louisa is a medical student, and she has just lost her grandma, who was like, like her person and so she gets drunk one night and does something really stupid well authorities believe that she was trying to commit suicide so they admit her to the psychiatric hospital for help um the psychiatric hospital is built around an old psychiatric hospital that is being torn down at this point and one day she is exploring like she's not supposed to be but she's exploring the ruins of this um ward that's being torn down that's you know around the corner or whatever from where she's at and she finds a guy on the floor who's fallen out of bed and he's hurt himself and he's blind and um so she rushes over to help him because you know she's a med student she's she's has those tendencies to want to help what she doesn't realize or what she comes to figure out pretty quickly is the guy who's on the floor is uh lieutenant robert and lieutenant robert has been fighting in world war one and has been injured in world war one so you have a bit of time travel with this as well. So every time she sees Robert, because she hears him crying or she hears the noise, and that's when she goes to investigate. So we see this, her going back and forth between 1916 and 2017 in the psych ward. And she's in a psych ward. So you're obviously questioning these things. Um, but this takes place in both times. And you have um, World War One plays a big part in this. I would say is there is the romance between Louisa and Robert. It is it spans over a lengthy amount of time, um, and we don't really see them together together like where they they reunite together until the very tail end of the book. So the romance um, plays a big part in this book, but it's not is it. It kind of reads a little bit more like women's fiction, but it is still really, really good. I really enjoyed it. So um, there's that one. Okay. So my next one is a little more lighthearted because this this is a trope. I mean, it's a trope that where you're typically going to go more to the dark. And so when I found this one, I'm like, I like this. I like to offer well-rounded book selections on our channel. So this is a novella. It's by Cassie Ment. So if you're familiar with her, you know where this is probably leading a little bit. So we have Poppy who is committed to a kind of like a swanky place. She has her own little cottage here on the property and there's other patients being treated here. 
But the problem is, is that Poppy is perfectly fine. She's 22 and she wants to live her own life. And her dad is the governor and he wants her to behave a certain way and act a certain way. And when she wants to go backpacking across Europe for the summer, that's kind of the last straw. So he gets her doctors to fabricate information about her and get her committed to this place with a demand to medicate her immediately because she's delusional, a danger to herself, that sort of thing. But none of this is actually true. So when Poppy is there, she meets Wit, who's the doctor. And Wit sees right through all of this stuff and realizes what's going on. And so together, he is going to help her get out from underneath this situation and basically get her life back. So also, it's a romance book by Cassie Mint. <laughs> so a little bit on mm -hmm. the smuttier side, but there's definitely great plot here. So if you're looking for an easier read on this trope, definitely check out Stolen Summer. Okay, mine can kind of be somewhat classified as lighthearted in the next one, but it's still dark. And that is because it is Cute But Psycho by Beatrix Hollow. So this is a paranormal romance set in a paranormal psych ward. <laughs> so this is about Brie. And Brie is in love. She's obsessively in love with her therapist. Uh, her And she's living in the modern world. She doesn't realize that there are paranormal creatures out there. But because she's obsessed and stalking her therapist, one day she goes to his house and is watching him and she sneaks in and she finds out that not only is he a serial killer, but he is a vampire serial killer. So because of that, he has her thrown into the psych ward. When she's there, she meets these other two guys. One of them is Baz, who is a basilisk. So his skin, nobody can touch him. If you touch him, you you get sick and, and you die or you, you like convulse and whatever because his skin is poisonous. And then you also have Nemo, who is a wolf shifter who is treated very poorly in this insane asylum. And um, there's some hijinks that ensue. There's a lot of things that happen, but it is reverse harem. She gets all three of the guys and they are in the funny farm. And um, I loved it so much. I was like, when I finished it, I was like, where's the next book? Because we were teased for our next book at the very tail end. And uh, at the time that hasn't come out, but right now, as of right now, it's slated to come out in March and I'm here for it. I can't wait. It, it brings the crazy aspect to it, but it also brings like just crazy because it's just a lot of chaotic craziness that happens in this world. Um, but it also brings like it's, it brings the fun. It brings there's comedy, um, but yet you still have those dark elements and those dark things that are happening because you are in a psychiatric hospital for paranormal creatures. So, okay. Well, my next book is one that if you've been watching our channel, I've talked about quite a bit recently, and that is The Fall Before Flight by L.M. Halloran. And the reason I'm talking about it so much is I read it specifically in preparation for this video, fell in love with the book, so it became one of my top reads of January, and I just absolutely love this book. It is so good. <laughs> So this is about Amelia. Amelia has a lot of trauma and hurt in her life from when she was younger and her mom died. And she has lived a very reckless life. And her dad and her brother, her twin brother, are very concerned about her. And her twin brother is the only person really that she cares about in life. So when he insists on taking her to this fancy oasis mental hospital but it's kind of more like a retreat setting to get her help. She reluctantly agrees to go because her twin brother believes that the accident that she had was not really an accident and he's very concerned about her. So she reluctantly goes and here we see her interact with some of the other patients and we see her meet Dr. Leo. And Dr. Leo is obviously going to be extremely good looking, but he's also very professional. And Amelia needs to start to open up, but she doesn't feel that she needs to. So Dr. Leo kind of has his work cut out for him here. The story is developed so well. The pacing is great. The development of the characters is fantastic. And the twists that happen in this book are just really add to making the whole thing so good. It's very taboo because he is her therapist and she is a patient. 
but it's taboo done so well. You like really see the development of them, their attraction to each other. And it's all done through Amelia's point of view. So Dr. Leo, we don't really know what he's thinking, but we can read into his actions just like Amelia does. So fantastic. I highly recommend this. It does not have the dark vibes, although some traumatic things have happened to her. So you may want to check triggers if you think that you might have some triggers. So I, don't, I won't give anything away, but, you know, check triggers. And as always, when we say check triggers, if there's a book you're like, ooh, I really want to read this. If, if it has this trigger in it, though, I don't want to read it. Sometimes those are spoilers for other people who don't have them. So feel free to message us. All our info is linked below and you can ask us, hey, does this have such and such? And we will be happy to answer that for you. Mm -hmm. We don't like to do that in the comments just because sometimes triggers are spoilers for other people. So feel free to message us anytime about those sorts of things. We're happy to let you know. Yep. Okay. So my next one is historical. Uh, and it's one that I also read this last week in preparation for this video. Um, and that is The Madness of Lord Lord Ian McKenzie. And that is by Jennifer Ashley. Now, we don't really see him in the psych ward here um, much. We, we hear about it. He's afraid of it. But we he's already spent his time there. So this book, we see kind of like the ramifications of what happens afterwards for our poor little Ian here. Um, so this is about Ian and Beth. And Ian is in our time now we would we would know him as neurodivergent and um, but back then they had no clue what it was so he his dad had put him into a mental institute his brothers um fought and got him out and uh we see him now living his life as this you know wealthy aristocrat in england uh everybody refers to him as mad but he's not mad he's just like mad isn't crazy he's just he's he's just different and uh we see he meets beth who is an heiress and she came from a her mom was in the workhouse so it's not like she had money growing up but she went to work for a, a wealthy woman who left her her inheritance or left her her estate when she passed on and so beth is at the opera one night ian is there and they they meet each other and she's engaged to somebody else at this point. And this guy that she's engaged to is not a good guy. And Ian warns her about that. And a friendship strikes from there, which he wants more than a friendship. He wants to marry her to protect her, even though he doesn't feel like he, he can love. He doesn't know what it's to love. There was a part in here where he asks her what it feels like to love. And um, it was really sad because he doesn't know what those feelings are. And uh, she's already been married before. She was the wife to a priest or a pastor. She was the wife to a vicar or whatever they called him back then. And so she's already been married before. She doesn't want to get married again, but he wants to marry her to protect her because there is a murder mystery going on in this book and other things. And so there's always that that cloud hanging over his head, that fear of going back to the psych ward and the things that they did to him in the mental hospital um, back in the day when these happened. So um, it was a really good book. And uh, even though we don't really see a lot of the mental hospital aspect here, we do see the ramifications of being in a mental hospital when you are just a little different and it's got nothing to do with mental stability. So that was that, was that one. Next. All right. <laughs> okay. My next book is <laughs> Flowers from the Storm by Laura Kinsale. And this is also a historical romance that I, I actually listened to this in preparation for this video. This was a great listen. The narrator is Nicholas Bolton, and he does a fantastic job, although he does speak with the accent, so it's harder to turn it up fast, so it's a pretty long one. So just letting you know, it's a great listen, but it's a longer one. So this, we have the Duke, and the Duke, is naughty and he gets it on and with you know he's like a, a playboy and when we start the book it's like hmm, this is gonna be our hero we're rooting for <laughs> because he does some naughty things but he is a brilliant mathematician and he works with maddie's dad on some mathematical things and so him and maddie have this brief acquaintance through this process well, then very quickly at the beginning of the book, the Duke suffers a stroke and 
this is back, like, I think they said the Gilded Age. So we're back in times where strokes are not understood. So one day the Duke seems to be a little bit eccentric, but fine. And the next day he can't speak anymore. He's acting crazy. And so they determine that he's mad and they have him committed and he's not, but he just can't get his words out anymore. And so he's very frustrated. And so his frustrations come across as being crazy. So he's taken to this mental, uh, basically an asylum. And they do horrific things there, which was a little tough to listen to. I'm like, oh, this is horrible. And it just really made me feel for like people back in that time, like what you were saying, that they didn't understand your character. Same thing here. They don't understand a stroke. And so they're treating him like he's crazy when he's really not. And Maddie is there and she works there. She is a Quaker. So her lifestyle and his lifestyle are extremely different. But she quickly realizes that something has happened to him and that he's not actually mad. And he learns to be able to communicate a little bit and she helps him. And eventually she ends up helping him escape. But Maddie is a reluctant participant in this because of her deep Quaker beliefs. So the story goes back and forth with a lot of angst between the two of them. A lot of things happen and it's very, it's a very sweet, emotionally filled book. And I don't really know what else I want to say about it. It's <laughs> good. That's good. We'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. Right. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. So go read it because it's good. Mandy really enjoyed it. And she's not a big historical person. So it's got to be good. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So my last one, I read this at the beginning of 2023. It's <clears throat> choking me now. Um, <laughs> it's really, really, really dark. Um, there was some controversy around the book when it first came out. I I didn't know until after the fact. Um, it's fine now. The author fixed the stuff, but it is extremely dark. So check triggers. Uh, the majority of the books are, I think we're still waiting on the last book to come out, but that is The Pawn and the Puppet by Brandy Elise Zecker. And this is a dystopian, somewhat gothic type romance. And it is set in, in the same asylum. So in this world, it's... Um, the women have to do these crazy treatments. They're, they're lady something treatments, but they, they have to like, they can only eat if they feel faint. So they get to like have a bite of something. If they start to feel faint, like there's fainting couches everywhere. They have to go through these crazy beauty regiments throughout, you know, at, the, at night before bed, it's like hours worth of these beauty regiments before they go to bed. Like there is some really messed up things that happen in this world. And you have our heroine who is Skylana and she is, um, she's lost her sister. Her sister passed away a year or so before, and her sister worked at this asylum. And so Skylana gets a job at the asylum because she wants to figure out what happened to her sister. And while she's there, everybody talks about patient 13 and how horrible patient 13 is and how crazy he is and, and, and all this good stuff. Um, so she steer, starts at first steers clear of patient 13. And then uh, at one, one point in time, she decides that she is going to treat these um, patients better than what they're already being treated because they are treated horrifically in this book. So again, check your triggers. And uh, so she goes in uh, to one day she's assigned to patient 13 and she goes in to meet him and he knows things about her that she has no clue how he knows these things. Um, this is Dessen is his actual name. And we know that Dessen has DID. So he has multiple type personalities and uh, their story kind of goes from there, but there are some pretty rough things that happen. And um, there's not a lot that I can say about it without giving things away. But uh, yeah, yeah. So again, I haven't finished the series, but I've read what's been out for the most part. I think I have one more book to read that came out not too long ago. So yeah, what's your number one? Or what's your top one? What's the last one? Your last one, your last one, what's the last one? I went first, so I'm done. Oh yeah, you did. <laughs> So we have brought you a wide range mm -hmm. of asylum type centered books mm -hmm. from lighter hearted to misunderstood to pretty much crazy and deranged mm -hmm. characters here. So make yeah. sure you check back on Mondays, Thursdays and Saturdays for new videos from us and give us a like, a subscribe, comment below. How do you like this trope? 
Yep. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.